Hey guys, it's Andy, and today I'm gonna to show you how to create a 2D floor plan from point cloud data. So this is gonna be another follow along tutorial. So that means you can download all the data that I'm gonna be using. I'll put a link in the description uh, so you can see exactly how I'm creating these floor plans in AutoCAD. So there are a million different ways that you can create a floor plan in AutoCAD, but this is just the way that's worked best for me. Today I'm gonna to be using BLK360 data of a, a very simple one-story house. Uh, I've exported it out as an RCP file, which is Autodesk's native format. Uh, and if you wanna see how I put this data together and cleaned it up for this, you can check out this video here. You'll also notice in the download link below that there's this LGS file. We'll be using this later in the video. This is gonna be a pretty in-depth tutorial, so if you wanna to skip to a certain section, uh, I'll put the timestamps for the video in the description below. All right, so I have my RCP file right here on my desktop, uh, along with this LGS file. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up AutoCAD. And the first thing I'm gonna do is drop in my point cloud. Uh, so I'm gonna go up to the Insert tab and then click Attach. Uh, and because this RCP is Autodesk's native format, um, I can see it right here on my desktop, stuarthouse.rcp. And open that up and then um, I don't I don't change anything here I just click OK and then I just uh, drop it somewhere near near the origin of the coordinate system um, so you can see here if I if I hold shift and I, I click down my scroll wheel I can uh, rotate around I can see that this everything is in 3D, which is pretty cool. And the, the first thing that I want to do is create a slice of this point cloud. So to create this slice, I'm going to uh, click on my point cloud to select it. You'll notice I get this new point cloud tab at the top. So this is point cloud specific tools. Uh, and I want to create a section plane on the, let's say the top. So this has created a cut through the building. Uh, so now we just can't see the top of the building, but I actually just want a, a slice of the cloud. So I'm gonna change, uh, I'm gonna click on this uh, slice line right here, and uh, then you'll, you'll uh, bump into this section plane toolbar. And instead of a plane, I wanna switch this to a slice. So now we're just taking a slice of the point cloud. Uh, it might be easier to see if we go to the side here, you can see, um, it's just this slice right here. And there are a couple things we can edit here. Uh, we can uh, choose how thick the slice is. Uh, so we can uh, make it thinner. Usually I like to make it thinner so that um, other objects in the scan are not, uh, are not visible. And then you can move this whole slice up and down through the scan. So uh, typically, Floor plans are drawn at uh, about four feet off the ground, um, but I like to make sure that we can see the windows. Um, so you can just go through, and you can see, I know that there's a couple windows here, I can see them there. There's a window behind the sink over here, so I'm gonna move this up. <coughs> Yeah, so um, here I can see the windows. These are uh, swinging doors. So this looks good. Uh, I'm gonna leave the, the slice location at about eight and a half, and the slice thickness, see if we can drop that down as thin as possible. That might almost be too thin. I might keep it around one. Um, and then Uh, this looks pretty good to me, so I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it there. Um, now I'm gonna hit Escape to kind of deselect from that section plane, um, and then click on the cloud. Another thing I really like to do is change the color of the point cloud. Uh, so the the these are the actual colors from the images, and it, it works pretty well. You can you can you can see everything against. Uh, this background here, but sometimes uh, a scan might be a little bit darker. Uh, so you can always change, if you, if you highlight the point cloud and go into the point cloud tab, you 
can always change these scan colors. So you could um, change to normal object color to make it all a single color. Um, sometimes you might want to use the elevation gradient, um, but I'm going to use normal. Another thing I do before I start drawing my walls is I try to clean up uh, everything around my point cloud. So uh, you can see this section box here. This is kind of annoying to me, so I, I just go ahead and hide it. Um, and also when you, when you hover over the point cloud, you can see this point cloud bounding box show up. Um, you can't actually just hide this without hiding the point cloud, uh, but there is a toggle. So if you, you type in the command uh, point cloud boundary, um, I think it can be zero, one, and two. Uh, two makes it visible all the time. One makes it visible only when it's selected, uh, and zero just uh, makes it never, never visible. So I can, I can still click on the point cloud and select it, and then go into my point cloud tab, but I don't see that like annoying point cloud boundary. Another thing I do really quickly is I like to turn off this um, UCS icon. There's also a command for that. It's uh, UCS icon, and then you just turn it off. Now I wanna create a few layers uh, to work with. So I'm gonna create a new layer called walls create a new layer called doors and then another one called windows. Uh, so I'm going to switch my active layer to walls and I'm going to make my walls white. Uh, we're we're going to create a couple more layers throughout the video but um, we'll do that when we get to them. So now we can get started uh, drawing these walls. Um, there are a couple different ways you can do this. I like to make sure that my point cloud is perfectly orthogonal as, as much as I can. Um, I kind of did this in my uh, previous video where I oriented this in register 360, but you might be working with a point cloud that's um, way off kilter. Uh, I'll show you how to do that. I'll show you how to rotate this cloud really quickly um, in case you need to do that. So let's say your point cloud comes in just like this. Uh, what I like to do is turn ortho mode on and create a straight line like that. Now I can highlight the point cloud and move um, a corner, snap it to that, uh, the base of that line. And now I can highlight the cloud again rotate, specify this base point, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to choose reference. So now I'm going to click on this base point, somewhere along this line, ideally as high as possible. So maybe I want to click on this corner, and now I can rotate it and snap it to this line. So now that inside wall lines right up with that, that line. I actually don't need the line anymore, I can delete it. But now I know my point cloud is as, uh, as aligned as possible with um, up and down, north and, north and south. Okay, so now I'm gonna get started with my lines. Um, I'm gonna just choose the line tool. Uh, there, there are some snapping options, so if I turn on my snap settings, um, you can snap directly to the cloud. You might wanna do that. I don't like to do this because it puts your drawing on the plane of the cloud, wherever it is, and I wanna be drawing on the zero, zero. Um, uh, so I just want to be drawing on the paper space of my, my uh, drawing here. Uh, so I do have object snapping on, so I will snap to other lines that I draw. Um, perpendicular is really nice, nearest is nice, and then end, end point and midpoint for sure. Okay, uh, so now I'm going to go ahead and get started. So you'll, you'll notice that I, my crosshairs go all the way to the end of the page. Uh, you, can, you can do that. 
uh, by going to options, display, and then changing crosshair size to 100. Uh, this is helpful because um, especially when you're working orthogonally, you can really line things up um, as far out as you can see on the screen. Okay, so um, I'm gonna choose my line tool, line this up the best I can with that corner. And then I'm, I'm just gonna drag it straight out to uh, the end. You can, you can use orthogonal mode um, as best you can here um, to keep things as square as possible. But depending on the building, things really might not be square at all. So um, you, 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 you have to be careful with that. Um, so I'm gonna go through, draw some lines. And I'm, I, use, I use the trim tool. You'll see I'm, I'm really, um, I draw lines across where they really should be, and then I trim away. Um, and I think I find that that's most efficient. So I'm gonna uh, draw down to here and then across to here and you'll, uh, I can snap to that line. Um, so I can see this is lined up really well with all these walls. This actually isn't the wall, this is part of a, a, uh, a shower. So that's not the actual wall. Um, and then I can draw the other way. Same thing, snap to the end. If you, if you want to kind of get a snapshot of how much you've done, I always keep this point cloud manager open over on the side, um, but I can, I can bring that back manually to show you how I get that. So if I, I highlight the cloud, um, just click on this point cloud manager, and it'll bring up um, uh, the, this little tab over here. And now I can click off the, then hide the point cloud. Uh, so that's, that's extremely nice. So now I'm just looking at uh, my lines here. Um, so I can see, um, actually I, I know that I, there's still a lot more to do. So uh, that becomes more helpful as you get further down the line. If you aren't, if you aren't too familiar with AutoCAD, I, I, can, I can try to explain everything that I'm clicking. Uh, because my last command was also a line. I can just hit spacebar and it, and it repeats that same command. So these are two back-to-back -back closets. Um, one closet is for this bedroom and the other closet is for this bedroom. And I can kind of see, I've got a little bit of scan data in each one, but I can see enough. Uh, I can see the back of this closet and I can see the back of this closet. and. Uh, I can only see the wall on this one. I don't have the wall on this one, and I'm going to show you how I, how I um, get around that later. So I can see it snapping to the midpoint. I don't want it to snap to the midpoint here, so I'm going to just really temporarily turn that off. Or let's just turn everything back on. So now it's just snapping to the nearest point on the line, and then perpendicular. This is, this is a point where this line might not be orthogonal. Um, you can see that it doesn't really line up with the, the point cloud right here, but um, up at this corner it does line up. So this is where the, the wall itself might not be uh, as straight as you would think. So I'm going to manually adjust this by just dragging it to there. And then I can highlight on this line and just extend it to meet. Just make sure this is pretty clean. Okay, so that looks a little bit better. This, I kind of run into same, the same thing. So I'm gonna turn orthogonal off. I can hit F, not F9, must be F8. Yeah, it's F8. Um, just for that one 
line and then turn it back on. And these are the bathrooms here. This is a little off too. I might make sure I'm going to that corner and perpendicular. I don't have a, a lot of data in this area on the walls, but I can see a couple of um, pieces where it actually got the wall right here. This is where it's really helpful that I'm using these extra long crosshairs because I can start a line on this wall um, and I can, I can level it up to these um, pieces of the wall without having my mouse over here. So I'm gonna start it right about there. And this time I am gonna use uh, ortho mode. Come over here. I don't think I have any real good data on this back wall. I'm just gonna put it right there. And that looks good. Sometimes it's easier to just extend a line that's already there instead of creating a new one. And then you'll see this is just one wall. There's another wall right here that you can't really see because it's a mirror and we, we clean this up. Uh, so this scan position was taken right here. This is a mirror, a full length mirror. So this might actually be a good time to jump into this LGS file. So if I wasn't actually out on site here, I might not really understand what's going on. I might not know where, if this is the, uh, the wall for the closet here or the bathroom. Uh, so I might want to have this LGS file handy um, so I can really quickly just jump in. I think it must be around here. So I can see that this, this is a mirror. So we're looking at almost a mirror that's the, the full length. So that's why I don't see any data there. Um, whoever processed the data, in this case I processed it, but you might not be the one that processed it. Um, they must have deleted what's ever behind the mirror so we don't, we don't get, we're not getting any reflections back in this closet. But I know that uh, I can see a little bit of the wall right there. So I'm gonna put a wall right here. That might not be perfectly straight. Um, all right, so things are taking shape a little bit more here. Um, in this area, I might toggle the point cloud off. I can see I've got, I think, all the, all the line work that I need for that area. I need this line to continue on. Um, you'll, you'll see that I, I started to draw a line right here and then I was going to, because I, I know that this stuff isn't actually the wall, so I was going to draw the, the wall back here and then um, draw this little outcropping, uh, but it's going to be, I think it's a little bit better practice to extend this wall up um, to there. Uh, so then I can uh, create a line that just intersects this. And then I'm going to trim these. And I think it, things end up to be a little bit cleaner that way. So things in this area are starting to take a little bit more shape. I can turn off the point cloud. Okay, so now we have all of our basic walls drawn. Uh, there are a couple things that we can do. Actually, we need to fill in these closets here. I'm gonna turn off 
turn on ortho for this. Um, and then I have no data inside this closet here. So there's a couple things we can do. Um, I can measure uh, the, the width of this wall. So I'm going to do measure geometry, measure geom, and then let's take a distance measurement. So this is about 4.6. So our, our walls are probably about four and a half inches thick. Um, so what I'm going to do, actually, we don't even need to do that for part of this. We can extend this line out. We can extend this line out. Uh, and then these two we can uh, offset. So I'm going to offset this. Let's do 4.5. And then on that side, the same thing that side. Okay, so those will be the internal walls for that closet. Okay, all this looks really good. I've got my walls in place. Um, really important thing, save the file. So now I'm going to jump into doors and windows. Uh, I, I like to start with doors and I use a, a method that's a little bit different than I've, I've seen other people use. Um, so what I do is I go through and I draw a little line on the, the door frame of all my doors. Uh, so I'm going to go through and create a new layer and I'll call it door guide guides. I might make this green. Actually, one quick thing that I'm going to alter about these this um, this location right here is I'm going to extend these lines out to the the this um, hallway wall because I'll need to put a door in right there. I've got a couple doors for the closets, um, the door for this closet. Uh, so now what I do and uh, I go through and find each of the uh, edges of the doors and I draw a little guideline um, across the wall. So I'm going to, and sometimes it's, um, especially with this, this purple color, it might be easier to change the color of the cloud, um, maybe to white. So um, I'm, I'm going to make sure that I'm in this door guides layer and now I can see that this this door opens on this side so I'm going to create a quick line right there uh, this door opens on this side same thing So now just go through to each door and draw a quick line. Um, just to get an idea, if I hide the cloud really quick, you'll see I have a little guideline where that door needs to go. This, I'm not sure which side this door opens on. Um, and this is where it's um, going to be really helpful to jump into the Jetstream Viewer uh, to check that out. So if I go out if you if you'd like to use this um, the Jetstream viewer with this uh, LGS cloud then uh, I also have a video where I explain that whole process uh, you can check it out in the description below. Uh, so I can see that this door hmm, it's not exactly obvious which way this opens. I think it's Okay, so it's double doors that open like this. Um, so, 
it doesn't matter which side of the door I draw this line on. And then this is the garage door. You don't necessarily need to do it for the garage door, but I can do it just, uh, it might come in handy. This is the front door. Um, this is just an opening. This is an opening. There also are double doors right here, I believe. So now I've got a, um, there's also a door right here. Okay, so now I've got a guideline for each of my doors. Uh, so now I'm gonna create my door block. And uh, I've gone through and measured a lot of these doors and I've found out that there's uh, 28 inch doors, 32 and then 35 inch doors. So I'm gonna have to create a couple different uh, door blocks. Um, but what I'll do is I'll go into my door layer. I always like to make my doors blue. And um, so you, your company might already have a standard door block that you like to use. Uh, if not, um, you can create your own really quickly. So I'll, I'll show you how to do that. Uh, so I create a, uh, a box and I might make it maybe three by six inches, something like that. And then I might make my actual door Um, let's say 28 by, I don't know, one and a half or two. I think doors end up being one and a half inches, but I'll, I'll just do it two inches wide. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is move this to right there. I'm going to copy this. Then I'm going to rotate this. I'm going to turn ortho off. I'm rotating around this point. I'm going to rotate 90 degrees up like that. And then I can do an arc, uh, start, center, and end. And then I start at this point. It's important to start at this point right here and then go up to this final point. So now that's a, that's a pretty good looking door. Um, I can highlight the whole thing, uh, copy, and then move this over here. So this is my 28 inch door. I'm going to highlight it, uh, go to create block. So at the, in the home tab, I have block here and I can, um, create, but before I do that, the important thing that um, really helps with these guidelines is um, actually turn snapping onto midpoint. I think that's all you'd need to do. Highlight the whole thing and then cr click create. So now I'm going to create a 28 inch door. Um, uh, and the base point is going to be, uh, this is where I have to select the, the midpoint of this so on the side where the, the door is, I'm going to select that midpoint. Uh, so that's really important and that has to do with the guidelines that we just set. Um, we've already selected it so we don't need to do anything here and then we click OK. So now this is, this is my 28, 28 inch door block um, and now I need to just do the same exact thing for the 32 and the 35 inch doors. Okay, so now I've got a couple blocks here. So at any point, I can go up here to do insert. And I have 28, 32, and 35 inch doors ready to go. Uh, so this is super helpful. So 
Um, let's do one that's already in the right orientation. This is, um, if you don't know right off the bat how uh, large this door is, you can, or if, if you don't, if you haven't gone through and measured your doors, you can say measure geom distance, and here we can go from this point over to this point. So this is a, about a 32 inch door. Um, there's this method. Um, there also are, is a, another method um, where I'm using this LGS file. So if I went um, into this house here, this gives me the good ability to zoom right up to this door. And measure this doorway right here. Um, so it's uh, a little over two and a half feet here. All right, so now I can go up to um, my 32 inch door, and the insertion point is already on uh, that midpoint of the inside of the the door. So here's where I can just uh, zoom into that green line and drop it on the midpoint. Uh, so this is going to line up, if it's a true 32 inch door, this is already going to line up pretty much perfectly. So that's that really speeds things up uh, to have these guidelines in place um, and it just, just makes life a lot easier. So same thing over here, this is a going to be a 35 inch door um, but it's going to be upside down but that's okay because I can still drop it on that point I don't need to rotate it I actually need to mirror it so I'm gonna highlight it command is mirror and then you just pick two points along the mirror line it's gonna ask you if you want to erase the source object in this case I, I do uh, so now this is um, in the correct orientation and lines up really well with uh, with my point cloud. All right, so those two look good. Now I just have to keep going down the line. This looks like a 32-inch like door. So I'm going to use a 32-inch door. Drop it on here. This is going to have to be rotated. So I can rotate. Rotate around this point, and then that fits really nicely. Same thing here. This looks like a smaller door. So I think I've got all of um, these doors ready. Now I can make a couple of saloon style doors. Um, so to, to make a, a saloon style door, I'm going to use the same, uh, I'll copy it. And move this up here. Now I've already measured these. I need 42 inch um, double doors and 66 inch double doors. So what I can do here is create um, 42 inch. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do half of that. Um, 21. So I'll click here. 21 by two. I'm going to copy. Actually, I don't need to do that. I can delete this. Actually, I don't want to delete that. I want this for the reference point. Rotate 
rotate this up, draw the arc. Then I can get rid of this and then mirror. Actually, you can keep that for a sec. Mirror this around this line. Don't delete the second object or the first object, but delete that. So that's that's my double door. Um, I might want to make this. So this is my 42 inch block. Uh, I want to create a 42. So that looks good. Now I want the same thing. A 66. Okay. Looks good. Uh, so now I can go ahead and start to place these. I haven't drawn guidelines on a couple of these double doors, so I can do that really quick. Try the 42 inch, mirror it. Oh, I need, I need to rotate it. Okay, that looks good right there. So now I can do uh, the two um, double doors that go to the outside. Uh, these are, I think, 66 inches. So I'm going to place this one. Now these, I think, open inward. Um, Hard to tell from here. Yeah, they definitely open inward. So just need to rotate. Yeah, that looks like it lines up pretty well. I might want to move this just a tad. Um, what I'm what I'm looking at here is this little. Uh, point right there, so I want to move it to there. Um, so that's probably pretty, pretty darn close. Uh, there's another double door right here. And this needs to be rotated and mirrored. Okay, this looks good. I might want to do the same thing. I'm just going to slide this up a little bit so it matches with that. Okay, that looks good right there. Um, these two doors are a little bit different style of door. They're a one of these doors that go like this as you slide them open. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to create my own, see how fancy we want to get with this, but This is maybe going a little bit over what I would need to do, but it might be something you want to do if 
Okay, that looks okay. I'm gonna create a block out of this and call it a 30, 35 inch mm, closet door. All right, let's see if this works. Okay, so that fits pretty well. If we wanna hide the cloud really quick. Um, and then same thing for this one. Uh, so the, there's not much scan data here. Um, so I'm almost going to have to eyeball this one. Um, let's rotate it. And then move. Okay, that looks good right there. All right, so I've got all my doors here. Uh, the next thing I wanna do really quick is this garage door. I'm gonna put it in the same layer. Uh, so I'll uh, measure this out. Hundred and seventy eight. Uh, so I'm going to just uh, create and then I'm going to create a box. It's 178 by two. And then I'm gonna move the midpoint of this to the midpoint of here. And then I'm going to copy the midpoint of this over to the other side. I don't know if it's really worth making a block out of this. Um, All I'm going to do is copy it from, I think this side is where I drew the line. Drop that in. So that fits really well. And if I turn off the cloud. Um, I do want to just double check to make sure that if we turn off the cloud, uh, these walls are going through um, these, this, this garage door. Okay, so I've got all my walls done. Um, these are openings. Everything else is uh, a door. All right, things are really starting to take shape. Uh, now it's time to move on to the windows. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do are the windows. Um, so I've got all my uh, extra doors over here. I'm going to move these out of the way. And I already know that most of my windows are about 35 inches and 40 inches. So I'm going to make two blocks, um, but I might end up having to just manually uh, draw some windows in. So to draw windows, uh, I'm going to switch to my windows layer and let's make the windows green. Actually, I'm going to make a new layer because I'm going to do the same thing I did with the doors um, and do these window guides. Now, these are also green. Um, so what I'm going to do is go in here 
and just, just like I did with the windows, draw some lines. All right, so I got most of my window guides in here. I'm gonna create a window block. So I'm gonna go back to my um, layers, switch to windows, and I do almost, almost the same thing as I did with the doors. I create a, I think it's, uh, it's three by six. And then I do a, the window itself is going to be 35 by two. So that's gonna be the basic shape of my window. Um, gonna copy this. With windows especially, I don't really worry about creating blocks uh, because I might need to lengthen them or shorten them. And I don't have to really do that many and they're not that complicated. So I'm just going to create a Copy of this and let's start placing these in any vertical positions or horizontal, I mean. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna, even if it doesn't fit, uh, there are a couple windows that I think are even smaller than this. Uh, I'm gonna place it and then just edit this particular window. And you, you can kind of see things start get to j getting jumpy when I'm, it's trying to, it's in ortho mode, so it's trying to do ortho, but it's also trying to snap. Uh, so when that happens, I just uh, hit F8 and then I uh, turns ortho mode off. Okay, so you can see some of these windows don't fit um, at all. Uh, so this is where I'm going to uh, move this over like that. Oops. and then shorten this up. So that looks pretty good there. That looks good. These look like they fit pretty well. This one definitely needs to be shorter. I don't think these need to be I think this just needs to be slid this way a little bit. Same thing with this one. These both look like they're pretty good. And I think that's all the windows we have. Um, let's turn off the point cloud. So you can see I've got two windows in the garage, a window in the kitchen here, a window in the, these two bedrooms, and in the bathroom here. And then in the living room, we've got a couple. 
Okay, that looks good, and uh, that's it for the windows. All right, so things are looking really good, and uh, at this point, we're really in our home stretch. Uh, so we, we still need to clean a lot of things up here, um, but you can really see things starting to take shape. Now what I'm gonna do is um, start trimming all these uh, intersecting lines. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna turn off uh, the window guides, I'm going to turn off the door guides. Um, and now we're going to start trimming. So um, I kind of have no real method to my, when I, when I draw the walls, um, because I'm expecting to trim everything later. So what I do is I highlight these two uh, lines here, um, trim, and then I can select the line in, the, in between them and that cuts it out. Um, so I can go through and do this. Things work a little bit differently with blocks. Um, actually, I, I, I just realized we didn't ever draw the second line to this wall. Uh, so you can see that this line is the inside of this closet. And I think we, we saw that these are four and a half inch walls. So I'm going to offset this um, with this button here. Uh, it's already set to 4.5. And I'm just going to click on that side of the line. It's going to uh, create another line here. Um, so that looks good. Now um, let's keep trimming. Uh, sometimes you'll select two lines that should um, cut this little uh, section out and it says does not intersect with the cutting edge. So what you can do, um, it's, the reason is because see this line doesn't intersect with um, the wall here. That's why snapping is really important and I always try to make sure that things snap together. Uh, but in this case, for whatever reason, it didn't. Um, so what you can do is you can extend these lines up past uh, this line and now they'll definitely trim this up. Uh, you do have this extra little bit. Um, so you can use this single um, line as the cutting edge for that. Oops, so when I, when I clicked on it, when I trimmed that one, this line must not have been connected. So I'm gonna undo that. Yep, so I'm gonna make sure that connects and then try that again. Okay, everything's um, coming together pretty well here. The, the advantage, you have to do something a little bit different to trim inside of blocks using blocks. Um, that's why it was a little bit advantageous to not turn the windows into blocks. Um, because now I can use the windows uh, to trim. You can cut the walls out from inside the block and in between. So now I've got everything cleaned away from the windows. Um, so now I'm going to move on to the doors, but because they're blocks, I'm going to use a little bit different of a command 
uh, to trim the, the walls inside the, inside the blocks. So I'm going to uh, highlight the door and the command is B trim. I'm going to click B trim. Now it's going to ask me to select my cutting edges. So I'm going to select um, these two pieces, hit enter, and now I can go in and uh, clean these up. There are a couple things you can do to speed up this process. Um, I'm going to highlight a bunch of doors all at once. Um, do the same command. I do have to select all these um, cutting edges. And then it makes it a little bit easier to go in, cut everything out. All right, so now the doors and windows look good. The next thing I like to do is fill in uh, the walls with a hatch. So I can, uh, actually I'll create a new layer, call it hatch. I like this to be white. All right, so I can go up to this hatch tool right here. And now I can start clicking inside the walls uh, to start filling them in. Sometimes it'll throw an error at you, uh, and that just means you might need to zoom out a little bit or certain things are not snapped together. Um, I usually try it a few times before I start to inspect to make sure everything's snapped. All right, so now this floor plan is really starting to take shape. Um, you might need to put in uh, individual utilities or things like that, but this is as far as I'm gonna take the tutorial. The next two things I'm gonna do are create labels for each of the rooms uh, and then uh, take some dimensions. So I'm going to use mText and call this bedroom one. I'm gonna make the text height maybe 20 just to see how big that is. I'm going to make it 12. I'm going to copy this and make a copy in every room, um, essentially just for the text box. Then I can go through and uh, change exactly which, um, change the text to which room it actually is. Okay, so this looks really good. Now I can take a couple key dimensions. So I just dimensioned out a couple key measurements uh, and I changed the units to what the client wants. So now I can go ahead and plot this out or send it straight to the client. So this was the tutorial on how to create a basic 2D floor plan from a point cloud with AutoCAD. I hope you enjoyed it and learned a little something. Uh, and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.